If you were to ask someone who's been into bushcraft for any length of time what the best knife is for a beginner or the best value for your money, the answer, more often than not, will be Mora. But which Mora? Because it's, there's a lot of Mora knives in the lineup. Well, I brought three out today that I want to give you a side-by-side -side comparison to help you decide which one might be the right one for you. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, the three choices that I brought out today to share with you that I think are the best choices from the lineup from Mora for bushcraft are to start with the Companion HD. Yes, I know this is not the Companion. We'll talk more about that in a moment. The Bushcraft Black, well known, but not that much talked about anymore since it was succeeded by the Garberg. So these are the three knives that I'm going to compare. So what I'll do is I'll bring the camera in a little closer. I'm going to go over quickly the specifications for each of these knives. And then we'll do a little bit of demonstrations with, but more importantly, I'll share my experiences with you. And at the end of this, I'll tell you which is the one that I would purchase if I were just starting out. All right, so the first knife we're going to take a look at is the Mora Companion HD. And yes, I know this is not the Companion. This is the Robust HD, and this is the old version. It looks different than it does now. I purchased this knife probably 10, maybe 12 years ago. It's my first real bushcraft knife and still serves just fine in that role. I bought this because at the time, the Mora Companion did not exist, let alone the Mora Companion HD. The other alternative, and I had one for quite a while, was the Clipper. The Clipper is a scaled down version of this knife with a thinner blade stock, and actually it only goes into the handle a short distance. Many people complained about it breaking out. Mora replaced the uh, Clipper with the Companion and then upgraded to a heavy duty version, hence the HD. But it is virtually the same knife in every way, with the exception, of course, the color of the handle itself. Quickly, let me show you the sheath that it came with. Simple plastic sheath, like all of Mora's knives, it clicks in with retention. You know, I've had this for a number of years. Uh, the retention hasn't loosened up, at least not significantly, but sometimes I worry that it might. So that's just something to be aware of. It does have good retention, but it could loosen up over time. Uh, the sheath has a button here and a buttonhole here. What's that all about? Well, if your work pants, because this was considered a work knife, if your work pants had the big button on it, you could just clip it onto the outside of your pants clip another knife with a, a buttonhole here, or you can just fasten it right to your belt. You know, one of the other things about this is if for whatever reason you're not wearing a belt, uh, you can fasten this right to your pants, your waist of your pants, and it'll stay on reasonably well. The one other thing I'll show you now, of course, is that I did put a loop of paracord on this, and I did that by drilling through the handle. That's the evidence, of course, that is not full tang. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And I do that with knives that I have the opportunity to do that with, because just in case I drop them. Now, if you want to know more about my thoughts on this knife, I have a full video on my Mora collection. It's now a little dated, even though the video is not that old, because I've added quite a few to my collection since that time. All right, so let me go over the specifications quickly, and we'll move on to the next knife. So, blade length, 4.1 inches, which is 104 millimeters. Uh, total length, 8.8 .8 inches, tip to pommel, 224 millimeters. Blade thickness, 0.12 of an inch or 3.2 millimeters. Net weight for this is 4.9 ounces. That's just the knife or 139 ounces with the sheath. It is made from carbon steel. Best information I've been able to find is that is equivalent of 1095. So a good steel and certainly more of Sweden knows how to get a good heat treat on their knives. Hardness between 57 and 58. The handle is an injection molded hard polymer type plastic or ABS with a rubberized over mold on it. So here's a couple of things that I'll mention right off at the top about this knife. This is the least expensive of the three knives that I'm going to show you. Right now, the Companion, not the, not the Robust, obviously, the Companion is running about $32 Canadian, depending on where you purchase, and I'll give you the link that I have, well, that, I'm, that I'm showing this price from. I'll give you that below. Um, yeah, $32. Keep that in mind when I show you the next two knives. So it is the least expensive of it. Now, here's my thing that I'm going to say about it. It has the best tip, and you'll see this in comparison with the other ones, for carving. 
One downside about this knife when you get it is the spine is unfinished. It's just right off of the production floor. No attention to detail as far as the spine goes. But I'd ran a file down it and now it is plenty sharp for scraping wood, fat wood, or ferrous Syrian rod. Still a great knife. Actually, it's the one I wore in my belt when I came out today. All right, let's dig the next knife out. All right, this is the next knife I want to share with you. This is my newest knife in my collection, and I'll tell you the reason why I recently purchased it in a moment. This is the Mora Bushcraft Black. Now, a few years ago, this one was all the rage. This is the one that everybody gravitated towards as being the best of the Mora lineup for bushcraft. Seems to have faded so much in its popularity, probably because of the release of the Garberg, which of course is the third knife that I'll be showing you in a moment. But let's just go over the Mora Bushcraft Black and I'll tell you my reasons for um, buying it. Now, I will say also that in the video I did on Mora knives, uh, I did not own this at the time, but I was in possession of a Mora Bushcraft Orange, which had an orange handle and a stainless steel blade. This has the carbon blade on it. So let's go over the specifications. So blade length, 4.3 inches, 109 millimeters. Millimeters. Total length 9.1 inches, 232 millimeters. Blade thickness 0.12 of an inch, 3.2 millimeters, same as the Companion HD. Weight 5.6 ounces for the knife alone, 159 with the sheath. It is also carbon steel, same carbon steel that the Companion is made with. This has a DLC or diamond like coating. That's the way it's referred to. It's a very flat coating. It's not a painting. It's not a, a parkerizing. It's not a bluing. It's just a really nice coating, to be honest, and it has no effect on the sharpness of the spine. We'll talk more about this, that in a moment. Material, ABS rubber oval mold, but a very, very different shape from the last knife. And from best information I could find out, the hand, or the tang extends into the handle about this far. I say about because I don't have the exact measurement. So very similar again to the companion in that respect. All right, so a couple of thoughts on this one mid-range price. More expensive than the Companion, but as you'll see in a moment, less expensive than the Garberg. Going price from for this knife right now, same place that I priced out the Companion, $69 Canadian. That's actually not bad. Now, this is just the plain Jane version of the Bushcraft Black, and I'll show you the sheath because uh, that will... Uh, be the reason why it is. Now, here's the sheath. Again, nice plastic sheath, nice retention. And one of the things that Mora did, let's see if I can find it here, is they gave you options as far as belt attachments. You just snap them on in the back here and you see it can rotate that around. So that is a dedicated belt loop. But if you prefer the old style of belt attachment that Mora had, they gave that to you as well. So this has the buttonhole. Make sure you can see it in the light there. That's where it will snap into the sheath itself and the clip so that you can clip it onto your pants. Obviously, I chose this. What's nice about this is now you have some rotation. It's not really a dangler, but it does help when you go to sit down or kneeling or anything else, getting in your car or anything to keep it from poking into your side or anything like that. Okay, let's just bring the knife back out. Um, here's what you, part of what you're paying for when you upgrade from the Companion to the Bushcraft Black. First off, you're paying for the finish, the fit and finish. This is where more really shines in the work they did to fit, fit and finish it off. They're, the spine is perfectly 90 degrees. It looks, it looks amazing, it really does. There's no grind marks at all on the spine whatsoever. That coating is really, really nice. And as I said, it, it does not affect the sharpness of the spine at all. Now, as you'll see in a minute, it's a slightly wider blade, top to bottom, and the tip isn't quite as fine, but it's pretty close. I'm starting to see shadow. You're not gonna be able to see this because it's a black blade. All right, so that's the second knife. Let's bring the third one into the picture. All right, the third and final knife that we'll be comparing today is known to most people as the Mora Garberg. Now, this is the only knife that I did not purchase with my own money. This knife was purchased for me by one of my viewers, and I'd like to send a thank you out to Chuck, 
who lives in Texas. Thank you very much, Chuck. The question is, is would I have purchased this knife with my own money? Well, at the time, I wasn't sure that I could justify it. We'll answer the question at the end of this video, do I think it's worth the value uh, that is being asked for it? But first, let's go over the specifications. So, and I, I think it's only fair that I am going to give the link to where you can purchase this knife from the same store that you can purchase the other two. So the same store for all three knives, and it is a Canadian company, the Canadian Outdoor Equipment Company. All right, let's go over the specifications quickly. Blade length, 4.3 inches, 109 millimeters. Total length, 9.3 inches, 229 millimeters. Blade thickness, 0.12 of an inch, 3.2 millimeters, the same as the other two knives. The weight for this knife alone is 7.3 ounces, which is 208 grams. Now, I did not give the weight with the sheath because there is a couple of options that we'll talk about in a minute. Now, here's where thing changes up from the other. This is stainless steel but it is an upgrade from what Mora was doing for most of the knives. This is known as Sandvik 14C28N stainless steel. It's a still an entry to mid-grade steel, nowhere near considered a super steel, but it is an improvement over the 12C27 that Mora uses on, its, on its, most of their other knives. Having said that, is it that much better? I'm not so sure, but we'll talk more about that in a little while. Hardened to a 57-58 on the Rockwell scale. Now, the handle is polypropylene, the entire thing. There's no rubber over mold on this at all. So it does have checkering, it does have grip, and it has a great shape. I will say that it has a great shape, but yeah. Now, here is where things differ from the other two knives. This is a full tang knife. In fact, it has a protruding pommel. It's not a full broad tang. It is hidden underneath the plastic, but that's fine. It still is a full tang knife, as you can see. It did come with a nice sharp spine. Attention to detail, detail again by Mora of Sweden. It is the heaviest of the knife, and it is the most expensive of the knife. And, okay, just before we go on to my other thoughts on this, let's just take a look at the sheath itself. So there are two sheath systems that you can purchase and you get your choice. One is you can get the leather sheath, which has a fold over flap and, and dome snap to keep it attached. It's nice, but it wasn't what I wanted. So I went with the more basic of the two sheaths and that is this one. And again, a plastic sheath. Uh, this has a well, two piece leather belt loop and a snap-on ring to hold it to the sheath itself. Let me just put that in. You can see same retention, just about the same as the others. And yes, you could still use this with a button because the sheath is split on the back, so you could put it over a button if you wanted to do it that way. But the option that came with this is this. It's called the multi-mount. Now, I just have it all wrapped up. I played with it a little bit, and I just don't see it as something that I'm likely to use, so I probably store it away with the uh, all together in one place. But basically what you get is you get a frame, that you can snap the other sheath into and you have a retention strap for it and then you have a series of straps that you can wrap it around any number of things. You can see the slots on the back of the multi-mount here. You could wrap it to your backpack. I'm not sure why you'd want to. You could put it on a vehicle somewhere if you have a place that you want to wrap it to. Uh, maybe an ATV, something like that. So I guess there is some options there and that's what more presented were options in terms of mounting this for those who did not, for whatever re reason, want to wear it on your belt. But then I consider this a belt knife. So yeah, and you can see I did put my little tiny piece of bright orange paracord in it. All right, just a couple thoughts and we'll bring the other knives in. So, in my opinion, this is less of a crafting knife, and this is where a bushcraft knife starts to transition into becoming a survival knife. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, as you'll see when I compare them, this is the thickest knife in this direction. It's the heaviest knife. Of course, a lot of that is due to the full tang, of course. But it is also the bluntest, and I really can't say blunt about a pointy knife like this, but it has the most belly towards the tip. It has the least fine tip of the three. Maybe that's the best way to say it. Meaning it's not quite as good at crafting where you want to get into tight corners and like you do with a crafting knife or a bushcraft knife or a carving knife. Is it a bushcraft knife? Sure, absolutely it is. It'll do everything you want as bushcraft and it is the toughest of the three of them, but not that much tougher. 
What do I mean by that? Well, let's just bring the other two knives back into the picture. All right, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to juggle three knives to compare one against the other, but uh, we'll get it. We'll figure it out as we go. All right, there's one thing I forgot to mention a minute ago when I was showing you the Garberg, and that is talk about the price. So once again, I priced this out at the same place that I did for the other two knives. And right now, this knife is selling with that multi-mount sheath, not the leather sheath, but the, the multi-mount sheath is selling at $136 Canadian. You know, that's one of the things that people complained about most when this knife was introduced was the cost because Mora had always been known for bang for buck, value for your dollar, the best knife on the market for the least amount of money. And people felt that they had just exceeded themselves with this, that they were charging way too much. Well, you don't hear too much about that anymore because this knife has certainly proven itself to still be of a great value for Mora. But the question is not, is this knife worth this money? Is, but the question is, is, is it worth three times what you're going to pay for the Mora Companion HD? That's the better question of the two. Let's bring the Companion back in. All right, so the Companion, least expensive of the knives, also the lightest of the knives. True, it does not have a full tang like the Garberg does, but just the same, I have used this quite extensively in the last 10 or 12 years. I have batoned it through reasonable size pieces of wood you know if it could span it with a enough on either side to uh, force it through then i was okay with batoning it carves better than the other two that's my experiences because of the thinner tip yes it didn't come finished on the spine but honestly that took really no time at all put it in a vise ran the file down until i was sharp or satisfied that it was sharp enough to scrape with and I was done and the only other thing I put that in and that was not a necessity at all all right so the companion HD great knife least expensive lightest weight what makes the Mora Garberg so much better well before we do that let's bring in the bushcraft black so like I said I wanted this for a long time it's twice the price as the companion is but half the price of the Garberg. So this is Moore's first true attempt at a bushcraft knife. This had all the attention to detail and was designed specifically. The grip, the, you know, the feel of this knife is amazing. And what's really cool about this knife is that even though it's non-traditional, you don't usually see finger grips or finger grooves like that on a bushcraft knife, is that I think this will fit almost everybody who picks it up. I have extra, extra large to double XL hands and it still works. Now, part of that is due to the grippiness. That's a nice grippy texture on the outside of the knife, but I have no problem holding on to this with maximum control. Amazing, really, really it is. All right, let's just bring it in and compare it with the Companion. All right, blade length. I think it's like there's one millimeter in the difference and that will be reflected in the uh, specifications. Of course, I'll put all that in the video description. But as you can see, let's see if I can hold one over top of the other. The Bushcraft Black is thicker spine to edge. Not a lot, but a little bit. So it is thicker. Steel, uh, width of the stock is identical. Blade length for all intents and purposes is identical. Knife overall length, uh, Bushcraft Black has it by a few millimeters, but not by a whole lot. Okay, great knife. I think slightly better with one exception. Look at the point. And that's about the only thing I'll say that the um, Companion HD has over the Bushcraft Black is that it does have that finer point on it, which makes it a little bit better carving. Not a lot, mind you, just a little bit better carving. Okay, let's bring the Gerberg back in and put it against the Mora Companion HD. So here's the Gerberg. Here's the Mora Companion HD. Three, almost four times. Four, it is four times the, uh, the price this is over this. All right, comparison, blade length. Maybe it's better back to back like that. Blade length, slightly longer on the Garberg, but not a whole lot, a couple of millimeters there. Blade thickness, definitely thicker on the Gerberg from spine to edge, as you can see. Tip, much, much finer on the Companion than it is on the Garberg. Grip length, you know, they're almost spot on identical as far as that goes. Grip comfort, well this has the rubber over mold and it is a larger grip so it works for me and that's one of the things I do like about it. 
but this will fit virtually everybody. It may not have the same texture and feel as the rubber over molds, but it's a good hard plastic, so it still works. And the shape, this semi-barrel shape, which is reminiscent of a Puko, works in multi-grips all the way around. It does have that going for it. Um, this came with the sharpened spine, as already mentioned, no need to modify this in any way. It's a heavier knife though. It's almost twice the weight of the Companion. Hmm. Is it worth, or you know, is it that much of a difference that it makes a huge difference? Well, here's where the argument comes in in favor of the Garberg. If you're using this as your primary tool and maybe only a knife and just a knife you went out for the day, this can be looked at in terms of not just a bushcraft knife, but a crossover into a survival knife because you're going to be able to beat on this as much as you want without any risk of serious damage. We know, although I got to be honest, I don't know how much hard, how hard you'd have to beat on this before the, the uh, tang broke through the handle. I, I just don't see it on, on these knives. It used to happen to the clippers, but I have not heard of a Companion HD having its tang break through the handle unless people were doing something really, really out of the ordinary for this. But for those who want that little bit more of confidence in the fact that it has a full tang, and maybe you actually like the extended pommel. I don't have a lot of use for it. It does help in scraping, not fire steels, but you can do some scraping with it. You can do some pounding with it if that's what you want to do with it. Yeah, so those uh, features are on this knife, making it a bit more versatile in most ways. But one big difference, I already mentioned, is the tips. So if you're looking at this in terms of true bushcraft, and bushcraft is about crafting and crafting with wood, this is the better knife because of the finer tip. Doesn't mean that this tip is weak. It doesn't mean that this is going to break. But if you're looking for a stronger tip that you can put into wood and pry with, with little risk of damaging, then yes, the Garberg would be a better knife. But because of the round towards the tip, it's not quite as good at carving. So I think that's the comparison to be made between the two of these. Now I'm trying to think what I haven't shown you so far. All right, here we go. Bushcraft Black and Garberg. Let's bring those two together. Blade length, virtually identical. Blade thickness, very, very close. Tip to, or spine to edge. I think the, the edge is given to the Garberg just by a tiny amount. Same blade thickness as we know. Uh, they, they all have the same blade thickness. Overall length, actually we have to give this to the Bushcraft Black. It's a little bit longer down by the pommel. Yes, it is a partial tang knife, but it comes pretty much all the way to the very back. In fact, Dave Canterbury has a six inch bladed version of this. And you know, Dave Canterbury is not going to recommend this knife and put his name on it, the Pathfinder version, unless it's something that you can beat on and not have to worry about breaking. And I haven't had this a long time, but I can tell you so far, I have done some batoning with it. Look at that. You can see how little it shows up on that DLC coating. But uh, yeah, I, again, no fears that I'm going to break this by batoning. Feel in the hand, different shape altogether, but just as comfortable, especially holding on to it like this. Maybe a little bit less so in reverse. Yeah, it is a little bit less comfortable than the Garberg is in reverse, but not significantly. But again, look at the tip. Let's see if I can get them both going in the same direction. The tip on the Bushcraft Black is closer to the Mora Companion HD than it is to the Garberg. So this is closer to a true Bushcraft knife in all its design features than the, is the Garberg. It may not be quite as strong, the fact that it doesn't have a protruding tang, but I don't see that as a handicap for all the things that I would be using a knife like this in. All right. I'm not sure. I think I've shown you all the, all the features of the knife side by side. I guess it's time to wrap this up and tell you which is the one that I would recommend or I would purchase for myself. All right, three knives, similar in a lot of ways, very different in other ways. How do I choose which is the one I would recommend to somebody? Okay, so this is very subjective. People's personal preferences around what knife they like the most and the one that they're likely to recommend to somebody else is gonna vary 
from person to person. I mean, that's why there are so many knife choices on the market, why I get so many to review, why I find that there's features of one knife I like more than another knife, and then, you know, it just goes around like that. So it is a bit subjective, and your, your choice at the end of the day may be a bit different from mine. But let me just go through the rationale for this. Least expensive, lightest, first knife that I purchased. Still does everything it did when I first bought it, still like it. It still works as a bushcraft knife for all those things. Knife I've owned the second longest, the one purchased for me by Chuck from Texas. Thanks again, Chuck. I surely, surely do appreciate it. Question is, I guess, would I have bought this myself? Uh, honestly, the answer right now is probably not. I don't know that I could, now that I've owned it especially, I don't know that I could ch uh, justify the cost of this knife at literally or very close to four times the cost of the companion. The knife I've had the least amount of time, but the knife I have been wanting to buy for the longest. This is the Mora Bushcraft Black again. A little heavier than the Companion, a little lighter than the Garberg, twice the cost of the Companion, half the cost of the Garberg. You've probably figured it out by now. This is my personal choice. This is the one that if you ask me would I buy it again, in a moment. This is the one I want. This is the one I'm likely to use and pick up over the other two knives. Would I recommend it for you? Well, I would recommend it either this knife or the Companion. If you're just starting out, you're not sure of what you want and like in knives, and you don't want to spend a lot of money, that's where the Companion comes in. There's, it's no question about it. It is the best bang for buck of the three knives. My opinion is this is the best of the three knives all around. It is the best in terms of fit and finish. It is the best in terms of feel in my hand. I can do all the crafting, virtually all the crafting I can do with the Companion. A little bit more than I can do with the Garberg. Yeah, and at half the price of the Garberg, this is the one I recommend. Now, if you don't like carbon steel, you don't like the black blade, by all means, choose one of the other models that has the stainless steel blade. It may not be the same stainless steel that comes in the Garberg, but you know, to be honest, most people aren't going to notice the difference, especially if you maintain it and you're proficient at sharpening. We'll talk more about that in a moment. This is the one of the three knives that I would say, if you have the cash, buy this one over the Garber. Now, speaking of sharpening, yes, I've owned it for about three months. I've put it through its paces, but I have not sharpened it by putting it on stones. All I've had to do so far is run it down a ceramic rod and then run it across a strop and it's maintained its edge. Now, should I ever chip it out or roll it, then of course I'm going to have to put it to stones. I really don't want to have to do that if I don't have to because I don't know what it will do to the black coating. I'm not afraid to do that, but so far, I just haven't needed to because, well, for whatever reason, I take care of my knives, I sharpen them, I don't let them, or I keep them sharp, I don't let them get dull, so I have to resharpen them. Yeah, of the three, this is my personal favorite, and it would be between this one and the companion that I would rec for, recommend for somebody, unless you want to buy one knife and have done. That's it. You're going to buy once, cry once, and then you're good. Then buy the Garberg because it is as good as everybody says it is. It's just not worth twice the cost of this one, four times the cost of this one, in my opinion, of course. Okay, that's all I have to share with you, showing you the three knives. Um, I'm open to comments or questions. I expect people will differ from me on this. That's fine. That's, again, I said that was my perceptions of these knives. I will put all the specifications for the three knives in the video description, as well as the links so you can see where they can be purchased, again, from the Canadian Outdoor Equipment Company, so they are going to be Canadian prices. Um, yeah, get out and explore. Take that path, let's travel, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.